Um, good afternoon to you all. Thanks for being here. For those who don't know me, I'm Councillor Russell Gordon Smith, and I'm the chair of the advisory group. And I'd like uh, I'm uh, I'm the chair at the moment because of my role as the cabinet uh, member for the built environment. I have taken over from Jackie Porter, and I just wanted to. Well, I suppose express our collective appreciation for all the hard work she did as the previous chair. And um, well, as you, you all know, this meeting's been held virtually and according with the council's rules for virtual meetings. And obviously, although it's being held remotely, uh, all the councillors are regarded as being present in a formal meeting of the council. and should observe the requisite standards of behaviour. Now, uh, a bit of housekeeping, first of all. As we know from these uh, virtual meetings, it's best if everybody can have their cameras turned off and their microphones turned off until they wish to speak, as this cuts down the feedback and the noise and disruption. Please make sure that your mobile phones and uh, uh, domestic phones are turned off for the time being so we don't get interrupted. And um, I can also, I'd also like to say that the open parts of the meeting will be audio recorded and live streamed from the council's website and in the due course uh, recorded version will be available also on the website. I might also ask you to, before you start, when you wish to speak, remember to unmute first, because we get this constant repeat of people shouting at the screen, you're muted, which takes up time. Um, now, uh, in order to get the debate to progress, uh, please use the chat function of the meeting to indicate that you wish to speak or to raise a point of order or explanation and we can then invite uh, the people who wish to speak in, in, in order. Um, obviously, we've got quite a lot of people listening and it would be good to you know, keep uh, contributions concise and to the point and preferably without repeating too much that's said by another person. Now, um, if anybody wants to leave, could they notify on the chat button that they're leaving uh, so they, they, we, we know that they're not present anymore. Um, we've um, we have a we have a, a, a PowerPoint presentation as item six, and I thought pow, prior to that we'd have the public participation as item five. Um, um, I'll invite the members of the public who wish to make a contribution at that point, and I would like you to try to limit yourselves to three minutes in your talk. Um, following the presentation, we will have questions on on that on the, that particular item, and um, I think that's about it for the time being. It's quite enough rules. Could I ask the Democratic Services Offer to carry out a roll call for all the members who are present? Sorry, thank you. Members of the committee to confirm they're present. Uh, thank, thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll start with yourself. Obviously, I can I can see and hear yourself. Um, Councillor Brook. I haven't seen Councillor Brook. Uh, Joined just yet, Chair. So uh, I'll, I'll come back to Councillor Brook, and uh, if needs be, we can make some inquiries. Uh, Councillor Clare. Yes, present. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Present. Councillor Evans. Yes, I'm here. Councillor Coral. Yes. Good afternoon. I'm present. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Thompson Centre Apologies Chair. Um, so that's all members of the uh, advisory group present with the exception of 
uh, Councillor Brooke, who will, will make some inquiries, and, and Councillor Thompson, who's given our apologies. Um, in addition, Chair, just while I've got the mic, um, I can see there's a no number of other members um, that have joined the meeting. I can see Councillor Williams, Councillor Rutter and Councillor Laming have haven't missed anybody. Um, we've got a, a, a long list of officers join the meeting, Chair. I won't, I won't, I won't miss them all, uh, if that's OK. Um, and uh, as we said at the top of the meeting, Mr Davis and Mr Hearn. I think Mr Hearn's actually joined twice, which is very good. Um, but if Mr Hearn could just um, confirm that he can see and see and hear us, that would be that would be terrific. Can you can can you hear him? I can I can certainly can certainly hear you, Mr Hearn. I can't can't see you, but um, can certainly right. hear you. Yep, I can hear you. I'm I'm having. Uh, I'm having I am having difficulty. I've got tremendous feedback from you uh, echoing, but you know, that's my problem. But if you can hear me clearly, I can make a statement as and when you're ready. It, it's cutting in and out a little bit, Mr. Hearn. I, I, on, on my screen, you've joined twice, so I don't, I don't know if you've sort of got oh. two running the same meeting, and that's why you're getting the feedback. Uh, but that's that's the end of the roll call, Chair. Um, sorry, Chair. And just before I hand over, I, th I think I, I can see a couple of um, hands up. Uh, Councillor Evans uh, would like to make a contribution. Councillor Horrell and Catherine, the legal advisor. Matthew, can I just go first quickly? Councillor Evans uh, Watson's just uh, emailed. Sorry, Councillor Weston's just emailed me to say that she's running late and she'll join later. All right. I, I've joined. Okay. I've joined. Uh, and that leaves Councillor Evans and Councillor Horrell, Chair. Um, right, OK. Chairman, I was just going to say the same thing as Catherine, because it flashed up on my screen about Councillor Weston, but okay. message already communicated. Right. Carol, uh, Councillor Horrell, would you like to say something? Um, thank you, Chair. Just to advise that Councillor Brooke is working and will join as soon as work allows. Thank you. OK, great. Good. Right, in that case, let's get started. Um, the first thing on the agenda is apologies. Are there any apologies recorded? Thank you, Chair. Just those from Councillor Thompson. Fine, OK, right. Uh, number two, disclosures of interest. Uh, any disclosable pecuniary or prejudicial interests? Uh, no, nothing indicated there, Chair. Right. OK, fine. Uh, are there any requests from councillors to make representations on an agenda item? None that I've been notified prior to the meeting, Chair. Right. OK. Well, let's go on to the minutes of the previous meeting, which was held on the 11th of January. Um, are there any reasons why you should not be signed off? Nothing indicated in the chat there. Agreed. Chat. OK, agreed. agreed. Jolly good. Right, shall we move then to public participation? We have um, uh, John Hearn, first of all, if that would suit. And if you'd like to speak for up to three minutes there, I think uh, a, a clock will be displayed once you're ready to start. All right. All right. Are you, are you sorry, but I missed your first, but are you addressing me, John Hearn? Yes, I am. Yes, yeah, sorry. Oh, good. Um, I, my camera function won't work, but I can, if you can hear me, that's fine. Yes, we can. Hear, well, I can hear you. OK, can I begin then? Of course, then, yes. Thank you. And I really apologise for um, not, not getting in earlier. Uh, my name's John Hearn and I'm speaking on behalf of 
the Trust, but also as a chartered town planner, urban designer and a city resident. I just wanted to say that the Trust firmly believes in citywide spatial planning and we believe it's the sensible way to plan for Winchester, which is a complex and urban community, and particularly with the post-pandemic challenges and sustainability, climate and movement issues. There are a number of good examples of um, spatial plans in the UK. They're sometimes called urban design frame frameworks, city master plans, and some are done under the neighbourhood planning regime. <laughs> The Winchester community with the council have worked hard to agree principles and priorities in the city vision and the movement strategy and we think that that will provide a good foundation for to, to base the citywide spatial framework on. We're very encouraged by the next steps uh, taking forward design issues in the officer's presentation and uh, particularly that they fully accept that there is room to do things differently this time and, and, and we support that. Um, design codes and spatial plans are promoted by government. They're easy to understand, more flexible, easier to engage with the community. Everybody knows where they stand and it leads to consensus planning and uh, no more looking at developments in isolation, which can lead to community disquiet and distrust and, and often slow progress. Uh, up to now, citywide planning has just been text and words in local plans. And some people read this as jargon and, and they can't understand it. And it's almost impossible for people to understand how doing things on one site will, it is likely to affect other parts of the city. The town forum planning group were sold on the idea of spatial planning for Winchester and they want it embedded in the local plan as we do. Uh, the town forum is the right body to drive this project forward and to work closely with the strategic planning team, the community of the city and stakeholders. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, very well argued and uh, I think we can take an awful lot from that. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, uh, Patrick Davies, I believe you wish to speak as well. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm speaking on my own behalf entirely. Uh, I did listen to the town forum meeting uh, last week and Mr Fox's presentation, which no doubt we'll hear again shortly, which I found very helpful. I agree with everything that John Hearn has just said. My only slight reservation is, in fact, the role of the town forum, because in the report for uh, paragraph 419, the third box down, it talks about the current timetable between May 2021 and June 2022. And it talks there towards the bottom about meeting parish councils and the town forum to discuss sites. My nervousness is that um, with all due respect to the way that things work out, the membership of the town forum is effectively the same as the membership of the council. So there's a risk of the council simply talking to itself. And I would hope that the various other local groups, uh, various community groups in the city, in the town area, need to be actively involved very much in the way that John Hearn has just referred to at, at these early stages and that the danger is that if the town forum alone is involved it is as I say a risk of councillors talking to themselves because the town forum for good or ill includes three cabinet members at the present time and I think we do need more outsiders involved in these early stages and I'm really just looking to further uh, guidance how it might be possible to involve the various community groups in the town at, at an early stage. Um, and I commend the terms of reference to your uh, panel, which talk about uh, arrangements for community involvement, the need for high level of public engagement in the preparation of a local plan. And 
a, a, again a reference further on to the same thing, arrangements for community involvement. And I simply ask that question, how is that going to be done at an early stage to avoid the sort of conflicts that we do otherwise might come upon? And I hope these uh, points can be addressed. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Your comments are very useful and duly noted. Um, now, uh, I think if we could, if I could ask uh, Adrian Finch to run the the uh, PowerPoint presentation on the local plan update. I appreciate some of you in the town forum have seen this already, but uh, there are obviously lots of people who haven't. Thank you, Adrian. Good afternoon, Chair, uh, members and members of the public um, and officers. Yeah, my name is Adrian Fox. Um, I'm the strategic planning manager, um, so I think I've met most of you, but uh, just for those of you who haven't. So I'm going to talk you through a presentation now, uh, which, like I say, I ran at the town forum, uh, and then obviously I can pick up any questions that you may have after the presentation. So next slide, please, Matthew. So in terms of the recent consultation on the strategic issues and priorities document, the great news was that we had a fantastic engagement reach. As you can see from this slide there, there were 585,714 people with the total reach. And that was made up of a various uh, ways that we uh, sought to engage people from Facebook and Instagram av advertising to uh, Facebook organic posts, to Twitter, to radio adverts, to advertising uh, online in the Hampshire Chronicle, and obviously email notifications. So that, that was a fantastic reach in terms of the amount of people that we reached. And obviously bear in mind, this all took place during a natural lockdown. Next slide, please, Matthew. So in terms of the total amount of comments, there were 2,202. And that again is a really excellent response and really pleased that so many people wanted to participate in the uh, local plan consultation. Some of you will have uh, participated in the live events and we had 154 people uh, participate in those. Um, a lot of people, 603 people, responded to the consultation via our citizen space. And we appreciated that um, some people didn't want to fill in the citizen space, so we sought to engage people in other ways. We had 1,183 1, feedback emails sent in. 108 votes on Twitter where we asked specific questions, uh, 50 response letters, and we also did some short polls on the new website and 104 people responded to that. And in addition to that, we had 174 people sign up for the uh, new local plan alerts and that figure is increasing daily. So overall, a fantastic response. Obviously, it's a double edged sword because now obviously we've got to carefully go through those responses analyze them and obviously see what they are telling us and we want to give that due consideration because it's extremely important that people have given up their time to comment so we need to go through them and obviously um, see how we can address those points in our new local plan so thank you next slide please so in terms of just focusing on the citizen space um, responses you can see there an age breakdown and probably not surprisingly, uh, the younger people obviously weren't so highly uh, kind of representative in the citizen space consultation. And I'll come on to how we have engaged with those as part of the consultation. But overall, a very good uh, amount of comments, 603 uh, kind of comments submitted through the citizen space. And as you recall, we set up the citizen space so that if you only wanted to respond to one topic, you could do, or obviously you could respond to as many topics as you like. And I think there was positive feedback from people that that was uh, a user friendly way to deal with things. And we did, obviously we appreciated that not everybody had um, internet access and we did send out four consultation packs to people that didn't have access to the internet. So next slide, Pete Matthew. So in terms of social media, that's obviously becoming an increasing way that we engage, particularly with the younger audience. And we did some Facebook and Instagram advertising about the local plan and obviously some Facebook organic posts. And you can see there from the um, pie chart that obviously we did manage to reach a lot of the younger people through that social media way. And if you recall, the actual local plan website was designed for a mobile phone upwards 
um, specifically acknowledging that obviously younger people tend to access the internet on their mobile phones. So we did actually reach to a really good uh, kind of profile and obviously reach to those younger people, which we all agree was extremely important because obviously the plan's looking forward to 2038. Next slide, please, Matthew. So in terms of obviously the Slido events, which were obviously interactive events where people could see in real time, obviously how other people responded to questions. The great news was we had uh, various uh, kind of people attend them, particularly I would emphasize on the two specialist events that we ran, uh, particularly on the carbon neutrality event, there was over 80 people on that call and we had guest speakers. The Lewin Will event was particularly well attended. Uh, we had guest speakers from Hampshire County Council. And the great thing about the uh, live events is they're all recorded on YouTube and basically we can actually see and since that figure this slide has been produced it's actually jumped up to 146 people have viewed the live live events on YouTube so that's a great way to keep people informed and a lot of people wanted to know well I answered this question at perhaps the first live event I want to see how the people answered the question at the uh, same event uh, for example live event four and people can go into the YouTube video so that was a good way and we've had some extremely positive feedback about the way that it was interactive and visible and engaging rather than officers just speaking. So next slide please Matthew. So what's the next steps? Well as I said we're currently analysing all the comments and that is uh, kind of a big job that we're focusing on and obviously we will be uh, reporting those back through LPAG obviously this meeting once we've gone gone through them. And if I can just give an example, I'm currently looking at the comments that have been made on the vision and there's 135 pages that I'm working my way through where people made comments on the vision. So I don't want to underestimate the amount of time that this is going to take to do the job thoroughly and make sure that we've taken on board people's comments. We've also uh, did a call for sites alongside the strategic issues and priorities uh, consultation, a call for sites. And obviously we've had a number of sites put forward and there's over 100 sites, new sites being put forward. Some of them for housing and employment and some of those for uh, green sites and some of those sites have been amended. And again, we'll be bringing those back through uh, obviously uh, kind of cabinet and uh, LPAG to show you what's changed in the 2021 sites. And that's really important to mention is the great news is We've got an awful lot of sites that have been put forward, which means that we can pick the best sites to obviously meet our development strategy. As picked up by the uh, previous speaker, we are very keen to engage with um, parish councils and obviously the town forum and uh, kind of members, etc. on obviously the sites that have been put forward. And I've been actively encouraging people to obviously have a look at the 2020 Sheila sites that are currently available on the Internet and will soon be obviously uh, kind of in the position where we know which 2021 sites we've got and releasing those um, to actually kind of have some discussions, hopefully around September time. And I really hope that these will be face to face where we can have a look at those sites and see from a placemaking perspective which sites make sense. OK. Now, the updated timetable is the next agenda item, um, so I won't go into detail that uh, at this presentation uh, point here, but obviously it is due to go to cabinet in July and we'll come on to that as part of the next agenda item. So next slide, please, Matthew. So in terms of obviously how do we take forward design issues in the, um, the local plane, the main point is um, how can we think of Winchester more holistically in the way that the local plan uh, deals with design issues? And as picked up by the, the uh, previous uh, person, we realise that there is room for improvement and we want to improve the way that we treat design issues and the spatial dimension of Winchester in the new local plan. And now is a fantastic opportunity to do that. So the timing is right because obviously we've done some great work on the vision for Winchester. And obviously we've got some comments back from the uh, strategic issues and uh, priorities document to consider how we obviously uh, deal with design issues now and how can we address the spatial element of Winchester in the new local plan. And that is really important. I must stress that obviously there is room for improvement and we are willing to do things differently. 
So what we're proposing to do is that we convene a series of design workshops and I'll go into those a bit detail now. So Matthew, next slide, please. So this is still kind of work in progress, but basically the idea is that we would have a first workshop, which would be via invitation, which would look at the current design policies in the local plan, and it would go through them in a systematic way to see what could be improvements uh, we could make to them and what policies we are missing. Now, we all know that we're not starting with a blank sheet of paper because we have, for example, the high quality places SPD. We have local area design statements and village design statements. And it's really important that obviously we take a critical look at those and see how we can improve those uh, moving forward. And kind of be a kind of critical friend to say, well, what's working? What's not working? And how can we improve things? And that will be a really interesting thought provoking workshop to kind of kick things off, to kind of take a critical view of obviously the existing local planned approach towards design. Now, obviously, the second element is obviously looking at the spatial dimension. Uh, now, this workshop is where we kind of roll our sleeves up, we get some plans out and we kind of look at uh, Winchester itself. And we will be doing a separate one for the market towns and rural area. But if I just focus on Winchester at the moment, um, so like I say, we, we get some plans out and we look at obviously the way that uh, the area functions at the moment and different parts of the town. And we think of it kind of under themes and topics. And for example, we could look at uh, kind of co connectivity and wayfinding, uh, including active transport. We could look at the green recreational urban spaces, how they currently link together or don't link together. Look at public realm, including the streets and other places and interchanges and focal points and look at activities and uses for um, kind of improvement. And that's really important. Obviously, how can we get activity back in the high street and access to um, services and facilities and shops, obviously picking up on the 15 minute city. So we kind of go through it kind of on a topic basis and we look at obviously whether or not there are any or, um, areas of op opportunity. And that's really important process of a kind of looking how can we improve if I take Winchester as the example, Winchester um, obviously town itself. And then obviously we repeat the exercise for the market town and rural areas. And that should be a really interesting and exciting process where kind of like I say, we bring together people and we try and work out what kind of place we want in 2038. And that's really important to obviously look that forward. Hopefully, as a result of that workshop, which I really hope we can get some really positive outputs from, we can embed some of that work into the local plan. We can also question whether or not obviously the local plan can deliver certain things or whether or not other things such as the community infrastructure can deliver those aspirations or whether or not there's another medium to deliver those outcomes. And it's really important that obviously we come out with specific outcomes and the other people such as Daventry we've had a look at, they've done um, kind of a town plan, etc. And they've identified in their local plan some kind of areas and uh, kind of opportunities. And the great thing is if we can get some hooks in the local plan about the future of these settlements. The great thing is then if there's opportunities for funding from central government, we've got a fantastic kind of lever plan in place that kind of acts as the hook as the mechanism to obviously apply for those funding streams. So that's a really exciting looking forward. The workshops themselves will probably take place uh, kind of middle end of September, October time. Um, they will be kind of facilitated. We are speaking to Kent Design at the moment about how they can assist us with that. And obviously there needs to be a bit more uh, work done to work up the proposals, but that's the general concept of how we can take forward two really important design um, kind of strategies uh, and hopefully improve the local plan and obviously pick up on obviously the changes that are coming as a result of obviously the government's emphasis on obviously building beautiful and getting better design. So that's a really important um, kind of part of the process. And I think Matthew, that's the end of the presentation. Yes, it is. So thank you, Chair, I'll hand back to yourself. I'm happy to answer any questions. Oh, Councillor Smith, you're on mute. Fish right. dear me. Um, very useful. Thank you very much, uh, Adrian. It's very, very useful. And I think the idea of these uh, workshops 
is is wonderful and i think when you stick up sheets of paper and people start to scribble on it you really get the ideas flowing and you can come up with very creative solutions i do have one question though and that is i can see it working the scale uh, being able to do something at quite a fine scale on say a market town but could you would it work on a fine enough scale covering the whole city of Winchester or would you have to concentrate on different areas at a time? I think um, the advantage of obviously getting together people we could obviously um, there'd be certain areas of obviously if I take Winchester as an example that people will be particularly interested in particularly passionate about so obviously the table can be set up to obviously uh, there will undoubtedly be areas that people want to focus on but I think that comes back to the facilitation of the event. I think the, the th key message is not to get too prescriptive and too detailed, i.e. it's a link between property A and property B, and it's thinking more spatially and stepping back and going, well, this is an important green corridor. This could be enhanced. There's not a connectivity between this site or that site. So it's trying to keep the balance right at the scales so that we don't get into too minutia detail about a link between property A and B, it's more basically thinking a step back, how can we improve the city from a spatial dimension? Right, thank you very much. I think that's a useful point. Right, are there questions for the officer? Chair, sure, I, can't, I can't see any at the moment. Oh, uh, Councillor Horrell, Chair. Right, OK, uh, Councillor Horrell. Good afternoon. Thank you, Chair, for allowing me to ask a couple of questions on this. Um, firstly, on page 10 of the presentation, Adrian, um, when you're talking about design issues, there is um, on those bullets a huge emphasis on um, uh, Winchester. Um, the district label doesn't come into it very much. Um, and although you said on uh, the uh, the final page there might be uh, a workshop for market towns and rural, uh, the next steps taking design issues forward very much uh, talks about Winchester. It talks about the vision for Winchester, planning for Winchester. It doesn't talk about the Winchester district. And um, although, as I say, you make that sort of passing comment on the last page, it doesn't feel um, a, a, a whole balance. Uh, given the, 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 the majority of the population don't live in Winchester itself, um, in the urban area that you re refer to. And I think uh, um, uh, one of the previous uh, speakers talked about the complex and urban community. I'm not sure if you live in Mitchell Devastation, you think you're in an urban community. So um, I'm just looking for guidance as to the balance of work that will be going on to obviously craft our thinking and that we are taking holistic view of the district, not just Winchester, accepting that um, the design piece is a great piece of work for everyone actually in the district. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Council Hunter. No, a really good point. Thank you very much. Now, I certainly don't want to forget the market towns and rural area because as quite rightly say, obviously they, they take up a large percentage of obviously the district. We will obviously be having meetings with parish councils and I don't I don't want them to feel excluded from this process. And obviously they we do want to understand how we can obviously make those settlements better as well through obviously good design and spatial planning. So they are part of obviously the thought process. What we need to give some more thought is to how we actually do that and divide them up, because unfortunately we won't have the resources to go around each kind of settlement to talk about design, but we will be having conversations with those parish councils about the settlements themselves, the Sheila sites, which sites obviously work, and obviously whether or not it could be wrapped up in that or whether or not how we do it. But we, I think it's a very good point. We need to think carefully how we do it and manage it because obviously we've got a lot of settlements in the district and uh, how we do it. And I just certainly don't want anybody disadvantaged you know, in terms of obviously the approach towards it because it needs to be an inclusive strategy. So thank you, it's a very valid point. Thank you, and Chair, maybe we can take that as an action. Thank you. Yes, OK. Um, Councillor Rutter, I see your hand up. 
Thank you, Russell. <clears throat> um, I've got some issues that, that keep coming up from um, when we're discussing things at planning committee. Um, is this a, a time to, to raise those now? I, I'd like I'd like us to make sure that we're we're covering them as much as possible in in the local plan. Sorry, you're you're muted, Russell. Um, yes, if if you would like to come up with these points. Thank please. you. Okay, so they're basically around the 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 issue of the the uh, the climate emergency. Um, one of the issues that, that keeps coming up is that we're knocking down perfectly serviceable buildings, which in my view could be repurposed. So can we discuss how realistic it is to require developers to seriously look at repurposing existing buildings rather than keep knocking them down? It's not just big buildings like old pubs and things for, 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 for care homes. It's it's you know one one bungalow in a in a largish garden gets knocked down for four or five houses to go in there. Uh, why can't we keep the bungalow and just add some more in the garden? So that it happens again and again. You see perfectly good buildings knocked down. Is this sensible uh, given the environmental impact of that? So can we reuse and renew? Um, and there are, I, I think I mentioned there are perfectly good examples of that in, in Kingsworthy on Springvale Road. We've got a row of very nice um, Victorian looking cottages, Flint. One of them was the original one, has been completely, you know, redone. And then the rest are built to, to match it. And it, it's very successful, very attractive. Um, can we increase the requirements for solar, wind, neighbourhood power schemes and get rid of gas boilers? Um, I'm assuming that that getting rid of gas boilers will be something that's that's Im imposed from above anyway. But certainly, can we take a proactive approach to 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 the way we generate electricity locally? Um, and I mean micro generation um, and, and uh, massively increase the amount of solar and so on that we put on every building. Um, in terms of eco benefits, every building should have, for instance, swift boxes and so on. Can we build in a lot more of that and, and improve the, the biodiversity and not just provide mitigation? Um, the physical permeability of new sites, we are constantly getting linear um, developments of sort of five or six houses off a, off a mainish road. And they become independent little closes and people drive in and out of them in their cars and they never get to meet their neighbour. Can we build in the requirement that even if there isn't a footpath that goes between these little closes and cycle routes, that there should be and that space should be left to allow those linkages and that permeability so that our communities can be real communities and not just linear developments. And the final thing, sorry, is can we just put cycling and walking before cars, think about that first and then the cars, because I think, you know, we should all do lots more of that, really. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Rutter. Some very useful points. Right. Are there any other hands up? Oh. Is, is that Mike Krask? So, so, sorry, Chair, it's, it's Matthew again. I can, I can see um, se several hands up. Um, right, OK. Just to say, Chair, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, first time on this committee for myself, so I'm not 100 percent sure of the working practices, but um, well, was, that's two of us. <laughs> a number of the hands up are members of the aren't members of the advisory group itself. Um, and in, in a normal sort of committee setting, questions and, and debate are, are, are for members of the members of the advisory group or the committee. Obviously, it's with chair's discretion to sort of take 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 questions from others. But I, I thought I, I thought I'd just um, just mention that chair. Right. OK, fine. That's very useful to be told that. But um, I did ask people if they wanted to raise questions. So let's hear the questions and all statements and ideas. Sure. No problem, chair. So uh, we've got Councillor Weston, Councillor Horrell, Councillor Krask and I believe Councillor McLean. Right, OK, Councillor Weston. 
Um, many thanks, um, uh, Councillor Russell. Um, I, I, I just wanted to ask a question, uh, or just really not a question, but just um, to, to recommend actually to the officers, because you said you're going to be engaging with parish councils, but not all parish councils are very good at consulting and engaging with their residents. So it's, it's would you be engaging with other community groups within the um, uh, within the community of that parish if they specifically asked you to engage with them would that be possible? because i say um we are a little bit disappointed some of us with our parish council currently they haven't done very much at all with the vbs they put out a consultation we have heard nothing at all and um, we're supposed to have groups working and, and we put our names forwards and, and nothing's and nothing's come forward so we are a little bit concerned that the parish council is not really engaging it, especially being a split parish council and the majority of the parish council is being in the South Downs National Park. And that does concern a number of residents in the non um, South, in, the, in the Winchester area, not in the South Downs National Park. Right. Because they don't have a voice really on there of, of, of people and, and people on there are not really engaged with planning at all. Right, OK, I think that's a point. Thank you. Um, Mike Krask. Yeah, it was the Krask. And Councillor Krask, I think, Chair. Sorry, yes. Councillor Krask. Uh, Chair, thank you. If, if you're happy for me to speak, um, I'm, I very much appreciate it. I'm not on the uh, committee group per se, but I raised my hand um, and very grateful. Um, I think a couple of comments, I think really just to echo the public speakers um, in terms of the focus on the on Winchester town and the need to engage with the community and the public within and the residents within the town. Um, I think that is it is critical and I don't think it does anything um, to distract the focus on the district. I think it's important for the district that we have a good and robust plan for Winchester town. Winchester Town may not have the majority of the residents, but it is the, the focus for the, the services um, and, the, and the commercial economic hub of the district. And if we're going to have any new housing and regeneration, we can imagine that happening within the town area itself. And we want that in the town area itself rather than in the rural areas. So in order to in, ensure that we do have sustainable and strong development and increase the number of houses in the district. We need that focused on the town. And so we need a good plan for the town. So I think good plan for the town is not just good for the town, it's good for the district as well, because it will protect the rural areas. So I do want to make sure that you know people don't think that a focus on the town is, is taking anything, anything away from the district. It's, it's good for the town, it's good for the district. But I think the comments just made about the parishes, um, and the point made, um, I think it was uh, uh, John Hearn, the town forum doesn't have the same democratic engagement that the parishes do. Yes. And so we need, do need to find a developed these workshops because I think it could compensate for the deficit in that parish structure that the town forum doesn't have. Um, so right. thank you for allowing me to make those comments. OK, it's duly noted. Councillor Horrell. Um, uh, thank you, Chair. Clearly, there's going to be an ongoing discussion about urban versus rural and this local plan development. Um, uh, if I may, I was questioning in the next steps that Adrian put forward, um, uh, appropriate um, focus on design, which we know is uh, core um, in the government sort of planning um, uh, sort of uh, the development. Um, however, um, were there no other areas that we should be looking at? Um, one in particular, given the COVID restrictions, employment I'm questioning um, and our plan is, uh, current plan is light on uh, the employment aspects and whether there is work that needs to be done to get us to a point on the next iteration of the plan around employment, please. Right. Adrian Finch, if you yeah. could. Thank you, Councillor Horrell. Yeah, very good question again. Um, we are, as you're probably aware, undertaking a green economic development strategy 
uh, and obviously my team is feeding into that. So we're waiting, obviously, for uh, the consultant to obviously uh, develop that further. Now, at the moment, obviously, I do fully appreciate that our economic development strategy was uh, kind of completed just um, kind of just into the uh, kind of uh, June, July time last last year, when obviously we were still under pandemic. We're still holding far and kind of updating that at the moment, mainly because we want to see how things settle. We're still in kind of obviously a transition period in terms of obviously what's actually happening, whether or not we are going to come out of obviously uh, this awful situation, which I truly hope we will do. And I think at the moment, our advice that we've taken from uh, council is we're just going to hold far just at the moment because we could spend a lot of money on scenario testing when actually we just need things to settle down to see what's actually happening and how things are developing. But the stepping stone is the green economic development strategy. And I think it would be really good to obviously share the findings with you of those uh, consultant study. And obviously what we need to see is, well, what's that telling us and what other information do we need? But I'd like to build it as kind of building blocks from there because obviously that works underway. And like I say, at the moment, it's still uncertain in terms of how we're going to progress as a country and as obviously a district as well coming out of COVID. Uh, because on the news, as you probably appreciate, yesterday it was obviously the gap, obviously closing stores. It's so unknown at the moment in terms of what we are doing. The only thing I will say is obviously the plans looking forward to 2038. There's always economic kind of peaks and troughs. Obviously, we're in a particularly bad trough in terms of obviously what's happening to the high street. So I think at the moment we're just keeping it under review. But it's a very important point. And like I say, we may need to obviously do some more work, but we're just holding far at the moment just till things settle down and see. But I think it is important for this group to see the obviously the findings from the green economic development strategy so we can see what that's telling us and where there potentially might be some gaps that need to be filled. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. And, and Chair, would it therefore be appropriate to ask if this group in our uh, capacity as the advisory group could review that uh, green um, uh, strategy and uh, to Adrian's point, see if there are things that we would, uh, subject to timing, of course, uh, be looking to fill the gap on? Thank you. I think that would be that's a useful, a useful suggestion. Yes, indeed. Right. Now, are there any more comments or questions about the PowerPoint presentation on where we've got so far? Chair, we've got two more uh, members uh, with their hands raised. Uh, oh, Councillor McLean. Oh, sorry, so we have. Councillor McLean. Sorry. Thank you, Chair. Can you see and hear me OK? Uh, I can't see you, but I can hear you. Uh, OK, I'll turn my camera off again. Um, yeah, my, my question, I, think, I don't know if it's the right time to ask it, but it's something that is forever um, coming up at planning meetings is particularly in, well, only in the rural areas is the conversion of barns, old barns, redundant barns into um, dwellings. And because of our policies, the way they stand at the moment, that very, very, very rarely happens. And I wonder if we could look into that as a specific rural issue and also South Downs National Park, I suppose. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Right, right. OK, if we can make a note of that. And sorry, there was a uh, to raise Evans, I think you said had put her hand, hands up, Councillor Evans. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I, I would, if possible, Chair, I'd like to get away, and Adrian, uh, from this sort of separation of market towns. Um, because the market towns um, did actually take a very heavy whack um, in the last local plan part one. Um, Allsford and uh, Vicious Orson took 500 houses and then there were a variety of settlements that took 250 houses, Wickham being one of them, my ward, but there was Colton Common and Kingsworthy and Swarmall. Denmead and Wartham Chase and most of those apart from Kingsworthy are down here down in the southern parishes um, and then the, the CPRE has made a statement which sort of puts north against south which you know nobody wants to see Indeed. nobody wants to see Winchester versus rural or north versus south but you know that's going to be difficult to deal with um, and um, I, I just feel that um, we should be looking at alternatives 
yes, the market towns could probably take a few more, but they can't take all the housing. Not not again, which is what right. happened last time. Thank you, Chair. That's it. Right. OK. Right. In that case, should we go on to the um, next item, item seven, draft local development scheme? Right. Thank you, Chair. So we've got uh, before you a draft local development scheme. The local development scheme is basically a project management tool to identify uh, the different steps in the local plan process. Um, we have identified a new timetable, taking on board uh, obviously the recent consultation and the amount of work that we obviously need to do to prepare what's the next stage, which is obviously called a draft Reg 18 plan and when obviously we could publish that for consultation. So the timetable sets out all the different stages, Reg 18, Reg 19, when we intend to submit the plan to the Secretary of State and when the examination process will take place. Now you'll see from the timetable the different dates that we are suggesting uh, we can obviously meet. Now there is basically um, kind of a year between each stages and there's a good reason for that, for the amount of work that needs to go into obviously analysing comments and obviously developing a new draft plan. We are very much in the hands of obviously uh, how many comments we get from the consultation. As recently demonstrated, we had 2,200 comments, which is taking time to go through. But we are trying to be realistic and we will try to go faster if we are able to. But obviously, uh, I'm trying to be uh, pragmatic and realistic about the amount of work that needs to go into this to make sure obviously we produce a sound local plan. So we are um, obviously at the moment working on the fact that we will stretch into um, uh, the middle of 2024, which I appreciate is longer than obviously the current timetable. But like I, I would like to stress that if we can go quicker, we will. Um, but obviously we are being realistic about the amount of work that's involved and the other projects that my team is involved in, which is um, a number of uh, different other areas of work. So I shall stop there, Chair, but more than happy to take questions. The LDS at the moment is planned to go to Cabinet uh, in the middle of July, and then obviously subject to them obviously uh, kind of agreeing it, it will all be placed on the internet because it is a key project management tool to tell people when we will be consulting on the various different stages of the local plan. But I would appreciate obviously any views from LPAG members on the timetable. Thank you, Chair. You're on mute again. Uh, I mean, one of the things which is difficult to allow for is the possible changes coming up in the white paper that the government's uh, put out and how that might impact on what we're doing. Yeah, if I could perhaps answer that, Chair. So we are, um, as members will recall, we prepared a local plan action plan in December that obviously look at the uh, white paper and potential changes as we know it. And obviously there's still a lot of uncertainty. The government's still working their way through their comments that they've received. I think it was over 43,000 comments. And it's still uncertain how fast that's going to progress. But we are trying to design the uh, local plan process that if needs be, we could pivot towards the new system. And we are trying to embrace some of the changes that have been indicated in the white paper, such as moving towards more digital interaction <coughs> and things like that, which obviously we took a step forward with the new local plan by obviously allowing people to search uh, kind of by postcode. So we are very much keeping our eye on the horizon to see what changes are happening and how we can embrace those in the new local plan. But at the moment, obviously, there's no firm timetable from the government, although there is indication that they are going slower than expected. Thank you, Chair. Right, OK. Um, questions. To raise Evans. Councillor Evans. Thank you, Chair. Could I just ask where we are with the duty to cooperate? I, I know that um, we don't have to cooperate, but that is looked at and we are surrounded by quite ambitious local authorities with lots of plans, but 
not a lot of space to fill their plans in. So have we been approached by any local authorities to cooperate with them? Um, Chair, I can see uh, Simon Finch has got his hand up and I can obviously add to that. Thank, thank you, Chair. Good, good evening, uh, members of the public and, and members of the council. Um, yeah, just a, it's a, it's a, another good question, um, as we've had a number of those already this afternoon. Um, there is a duty to cooperate, that's absolutely right. That could be replaced if the government implements what's in the white paper, because that was one of the topics that the white paper was seeking to address. So we don't know how that would be replaced, but we're working where we are at the moment. And part of that, and I think what the councillor may have been sort of touching on there was uh, partnership for South Hampshire. Uh, and that's doing a, a number of work streams um, at the moment or is about to embark on some additional work streams around um, strategic development areas, opportunities for those, green belt, etc. So um, they're all things which feed into the mix um, and it, it helps us to deal with that duty to cooperate. So that's a good thing. Um, <coughs> ultimately, of course, um, the only way that things can get allocated, designated, etc., um, in terms of uh, any part of our district is through our local plan. So ultimately, um, it's the city council that has discretion to determine what goes in. Um, some of the conversations can be quite difficult ones around duty to cooperate, but it is a duty to cooperate and not a duty to agree. And that's significantly different, <laughs> but we must listen and have a duty to do that. And one of the things that plans can get challenged on is uh, not being able to record, record and demonstrate that you've engaged properly in that process. But having a, a vehicle like PUSH is useful. We've got other people to engage with that are not members of PUSH, you know, Basingstoke, etc. Um, but it's a good vehicle to do that and to undertake it. But ultimately, it, it can only be the City Council and all the other respective councils through their local plan process that decides what to designate. But even if you weren't to do and be part of that sort of piece of work, that work's still going to go ahead in any event. So it, it's useful for us to, to be part of that and to influence it and to have an input into it. Hopefully that's useful. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Simon. Right. Uh, Caroline Coral. Um, uh, thank you, Chair, for um, allowing me to ask some uh, further questions. I have several, if I may, on the plan before us um, that um, the officers have kindly circulated to us. Um, one is obviously um, a follow up actually to the question that Councillor Evans asked, which is one is the conversation with the uh, push uh, authorities. The other is actually developing a plan with them, uh, which I understood that we were engaged in, and I'd like to understand the status of that and um, where that is uh, in everyone's consideration. Um, a point on the uh, uh, page 27 of the report that has come to us, um, consultation on the Reg 18 and 19 um, are both planned in August and September uh, 22 and 23. Um, and August is a terrible month, obviously, for consultation. I appreciate you'll have a schedule that you have to work to, um, Adrian and the team, so it may not be easy. But I just know already that there'll be lots of comments about consultation in August. And so both Reg 18 and 19 are coming up at the same period. So if there's anything that we can do to um, uh, alleviate that clash um, and still you know, remain on schedule, that would be good. Um, also, um, if I may, um, the South Downs National Park um, obviously uh, represents a significant part of the district. They have their own plan. Um, I don't see any sort of interaction documented anywhere, excepting again that there may be dialogue going on. But actually, for many of our communities, the South Downs National Park uh, is the prevailing plan. And obviously just understanding the interaction between our local plan and, and the, the sort of material outcome and the South Downs will be important. Uh, for many of our communities. Um, and the other thing, Adrian, you, you know, and I, I'm sure it's my um, 
uh, I haven't read it properly. Obviously, at the moment, we've got in our current plan, um, and for many of us, uh, the say, Gypsy and Traveller um, uh, uh, and Travelling Show People piece of the puzzle is a difficult one in many of our communities. We live with some of those commitments today, um, and I don't see that written down as part of the output on the, this next version. Just remind me where that all fits in the whole thing, given it's such a uh, a potent point for many of our communities in the district. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. If I, if I pick them up uh, kind of in that order, if that's OK, Karen, so I'll um, deal with the gypsy and traveller one first. Um, so in terms of gypsy and travellers, we are as part of the evidence base uh, completing a gypsy and uh, traveller accommodation needs assessment. That work will also be taking on board what's called a pitch deliverability assessment to look at any need. Now that work uh, is still ongoing, it's not yet being completed. And the most important point is that the Gypsy and Traveller uh, work at the moment will be incorporated into the new local plan. And I appreciate that that's going to be one of the key challenges that we are all going to have to address in terms of obviously how we can meet the, obviously on any need that comes through from that study. So it will be incorporated into the new local plan rather than a separate DPD. Um, in terms of the South Downs National Park, uh, we do have regular dialogue with them, uh, our colleagues over there, and uh, that's part of our duty to cooperate. We have talked to them about their existing local plan, how they feel uh, about obviously what works, what doesn't work, how they'd like to improve it, and obviously how it does integrate with our local plan. They obviously gave us some feedback as part of their consultation on the strategic issues and priorities document. And obviously we're looking at that and obviously looking at their specific policies to see if there's any policies that are would be appropriate for us to include in our new local plan. So we do have regular dialogue with them and I'm pleased to say it's really constructive dialogue uh, that I have with my equivalent over there. And we have asked, uh, for example, them to uh, look at certain things and they are very cooperative about that. So that's really, uh, really appreciated by them. In terms of obviously the um, the actual dates for the consultation, I fully accept that obviously August, September is not an ideal month. It's trying to work that out because obviously we have to report back um, to obviously get obviously at the Reg 18 stage, we need to get cabinet approval. At the Reg 19 stage, I need to get Cabinet and Council approval. So it's just trying to work that out and obviously not trying to elongate the timetable any longer than what we need to. So it is a balance. Um, and obviously what I was suggesting was that we could obviously perhaps hold a longer, slightly longer consultation to allow for obviously the summer holidays. But it's just it's just a tension in terms of obviously working backwards, how we actually get permissions and when we actually go out. Uh, because obviously if I delay that to September, October, that's another two months on, which obviously uh, I'm trying to avoid obviously elongating the timetable, but it's a very valid point. Um, and then in terms of PUSH, um, we are obviously a member of PUSH, as Mr Finch uh, indicated, so we do have regular dialogue with them in terms of obviously what's going on. Um, they are running slightly behind schedule at the moment, looking at the strategic development areas in terms of the way that they are assessing sites. But the key thing is that we are part of it. And the great thing about being part of it is we can make sure that obviously they are assessing it the same way that we would assess sites. Um, so those conversations are active and still going on um, on a regular basis to obviously understand uh, how we can work together because obviously there may well be some unmet need that we need to meet, but uh, no decision has been made on that. But I believe Mr Finch will probably want to add to that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so again, a good thing. Um, yeah, I can do that. Hopefully uh, assist you there, uh, uh, Councillor Horrell. Um, as Adrian said, it's an ongoing discussion. And, and as you know, we are a member in terms of being a member of the Joint Committee where a lot of these things are periodically reported. Uh, and there's a meeting, I think, coming up at the end of this month now into July. Um, so we, we have that. And uh, as I said before, clearly um, we, we're working collaboratively. That was um, a statement of common ground and then a sort of strategy coming from that. But as I said, ultimately, whatever the issue might be, whether it's the designation of development areas, green belts or anything else, um, it's something which um, we will need to address specifically through um, the local plan process. And in actual fact, where we are with the local plan probably isn't a bad thing in that respect. So it's feeding into that and that dialogue is ongoing. And as we've we've already discussed today, 
um, we have to uh, meet the duty to cooperate in any event and, and it's a good vehicle to do that but clearly that does not mean to say that the council will, you know, will reserve its position uh, and I'm no doubt that our representative on on the joint committee uh, from you know, previous expenses is quite prepared to do that and to say where there is a divergence of views rather than being a consensus which is not always the case um, but as I say to date um, we haven't um, I, I think that arrangements work quite effectively thank you chair right thank you Simon very useful chair could I just ask a follow-up question to well actually uh, to Mr Fox but um, in fact maybe to other officers um, right. We're, we're in a pickle, I think it's fair to say, on our uh, Gypsy and Traveller and Travelling Show People sites currently, yes. which we all know and we have, um, you yourself Chair have been involved in some recent discussions. Um, how do we, how do we marry the current um, uh, issues that we have with the need to have a new statement, a new identified need and, and new pictures when we're, we're still trying to um, establish uh, the historic position, which is clearly uh, uh, less than, uh, than perfect and in fact not in keeping with the planning permissions that were agreed? Well, I mean, in, in short, the problem is there aren't enough sites and therefore the problem has to be to create more to locate more sites in places which find people find acceptable at the moment it's very difficult to close sites off uh, because they will argue there's nowhere else for us to go and that's that's it in a nutshell but uh, Simon Finch is probably better far more capable to answer this particular one I will certainly try and, and assist if I may, uh, uh, Chair and Councillor Horrell. Um, you're right. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult issue. Um, there, there can be issues. It's not by any means unique to Winchester, but large rural districts and indeed some of the urban ones experience some of these uh, tensions. I think the key to this really, uh, as, as Mr Fox has explained, is, is doing a, a re refreshing uh, an assessment of what the need is and how we can accommodate that. Now, um, what we did as part of the strategic issues and priorities consultation was to start to look at this uh, issue then because there are a number of ways that we can meet um, or seek to meet um, what the, the need is. Um, and it may be that we can uh, we can look to allocate sites. It may be we have a permissive type of criteria based policy or both. And it may be that some sites, but by no means all sites that are there with no permission or a temporary consent could be made permanent and that's not to say that that's appropriate in all cases by any stretch of the imagination so i think the point is um it's coming up with a, a sustainable policy that means that we can effectively show how and we're going to have to demonstrate this as well to the government inspector to get our, our plan found to be sound how we're going to deal with all of these sorts of issues in terms of being able to meet um, to meet that need that's identified. So um, that's hopefully that gives you a sort of a sketch or an outline of how um, the policy can evolve or can be developed to address that particular uh, difficult issue. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Simon. Thank you. Right. Are there any more hands up? <laughs> Not that I can see at the moment, Chair, no. Right. Um, uh, Adrian, is there anything you'd like to say in conclusion? No, thank you very much uh, for everybody who's given some uh, really helpful thoughts. Um, obviously, like I say, the local development scheme will go to Cabinet in the middle of July. Um, and the idea obviously then is obviously that we would publish that on the website. As I said, the work on the design workshops is still evolving. Uh, we need to talk to external facilitators to see how obviously practical and how we can actually obviously move that debate forward, which is really exciting. And I really hope that we can do that face to face um, and obviously roll our sleeves up and actually do some proper placemaking planning, which uh, will be a nice change for us to do that. So uh, really looking forward to that and obviously welcome obviously uh, members views on obviously how we can get the most from that. So thank you very much for those comments. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Yes, I, I have spent the early part of my life with sheets of paper and pencils and rotary pens doing drawings and trying to solve design solutions. So I should be very happy to be there. Right. Um, a final note, I'd like to thank the officers very much. They've obviously put a lot of work into this and they've been well prepared and come up with 
practical answers. Oh, hello, Caroline Horrell. Anyway, I'd like to thank the officers on you on all the councillors' behalf. And Councillor Horrell, you would like to say something, please? Um, Chair, I was just um, wondering if we might, um, uh, as I indicated earlier, a desire to have the green economy on the agenda next time, whether we could also have the push a strategic development area discussion so that it is um, you know, fully visible to this group and then we can all uh, contribute to that discussion because obviously at the moment uh, we have a representative to that committee, but uh, this group I think would value, the, uh, to under, uh, value understanding uh, that broader discussion that's taking place. Thank you, Chair. Right, thank, thank you, you Councillor Horrell. I think we can do that. I don't think at the moment to move on a bit, I'm in a position, we're in a position to set a, time, uh, a date for the next meeting. I think it's rather down to finding a gap in some very full diaries, but we'll be back in touch with you on that. And I think we can draw the meeting to a conclusion. And thank you very much for all your suggestions and notes. And we'll push this, we'll collectively push this thing forward. OK, thank you very much. Bye then. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, officers. Thank you.